Here we go with, I'm sure what you guys are all here for, practical advice on use in the garden. I read in the comments that a lot of you folks are already using urine in your garden. Um, congratulations. Please um, share more. Um, you know, if you guys are using it out there in the real world, then uh, then uh, the more information, the better. I'll tell you, um, this, this is what I know. A couple of tips about urine in the garden. I've already spoken about avoiding volatizing. That's really what uh, the word, or, or my word at least, for applying urine directly to the soil where the ammonia starts to gas off and you get that smell. Um, that's, that's nitrogen loss. Again, when you smell uh, urine, you, that's, that's nitrogen going out, out, the, out the air. Um, you can avoid those losses by incorporating directly in the soil. Um, a number of different ways to do this. You can apply directly uh, into furrows. You can, you can take like a row crop and you can just cut a little furrow to the side of your row crop, maybe six inches or so, four inches from the base of the crop. Apply your urine and then cover it pretty quickly. That's one way to do it. Um, you can just scrape aside your mulch. That's, that's one way that I do it at home. I'll scrape aside mulch, I'll water it in, and then cover it back up. Uh, most commonly is, is diluting the urine itself and letting the water carry it down. Now, you just need to make a judgment call on whether or not you need to be watering your plants. Um, absolutely do not overwater your plants here. Um, urine in soggy soil is going to uh, denitrify, and, and again, you'll lose that nitrogen, uh, nitrogen to the air. Um, and, you know, just as a rule of thumb, avoid spraying foliar. I don't think anybody would do that, but um, just, just don't. Of course, not all crops are going to thrive with high nitrogen. Um, you, you really need to know your crop. You need to know how much nitrogen it needs, whether that's a test or whether that's just um, your experience in the garden. The timing of application is pretty important for most uh, crops. It's really you're going to apply during that vegetative growth stage. That's when most crops require most of their nitrogen. Um, heavy nitrogen feeders are your brassicas, beets. I was surprised to see that, but beets and your leafy greens. Um, urine, we've already spoken, is very low in potassium, rather low in potassium. Uh, a very common thing to do among homesteaders is to apply urine with wood ash. Uh, to, to try to make a complete um, balanced NPK calcium magnesium fertilizer. Um, that's great. That's great. One thing that I would advise uh, is, is applying those two things separately, um, peeing directly into a bucket of wood ashes. Uh, I have to imagine that you're going to facilitate this off-gassing thing a lot quicker. Um, but that's, uh, that's, that's your call. Um, nightshades, alliums, asparagus, which I've always assumed until doing this research was a heavy nitrogen feeder, but I, it, I suppose it needs a more balanced fertilizer. I will say that I, I fertilized my asparagus pretty heavily with urine this past year, uh, and it did quite well. Um, again, that WHO recommendation, do not apply urine within uh, one month of harvesting. Let me say here that uh, I'm not... Qualified, and I'm not here to advise on any large-scale applications. Um, again, everything that I've grown with urine has been experimental and for my own consumption, my own family's consumption. Uh, if my kids knew about it, and I pray they're not watching, I don't think that they would even eat it. I'm, uh, like I said, I, I'm maybe a little more uh, suburban than I would like to admit. My kids aren't accustomed to this kind of thing yet. So uh, I don't know. That's maybe more than you guys want to know. But um, uh, my soils are also pretty, very high in organic matter. I had it tested and uh, was shown at 12% uh, organic matter. So a lot of my nitrogen is already coming from these slow release sources. Um, urine is absolutely not my only source of nitrogen. Um, I use it again, during that vegetative growth stage and um, in the early spring. Uh, and this is, uh, again, I was telling you about the conversation I had with a friend of mine who's discussing nitrates and ammonium and what plants want. And, um, you know, I floated the question, and maybe somebody out there on the Internet knows um, watching this, but, um, you know, my theory is that plants could use an early spring boost, certainly blueberries, again, Craven ammonium. 
uh, when the soils are really just warming up and the biology is not quite that active. So my theory and, um, is that possibly um, the uh, urine is helpful for um, providing that early spring boost for, uh, for hungry blueberries. Um, let's see, Pat told me an interesting story, Pat, the director at Living With Farms, of a gardener friend of his that came to him for advice about low fertility issues in their garden. And um, as it turns out, there was a lot of buried wood, buried carbon in the soil, uh, presumably maybe unfinished compost being buried in the soil. And um, all of that extra carbon, all that extra wood tying up nitrogen, uh, where regular applications in that first season of urine provided this counterbalance where, where that nitrogen is there and now it's available, it's not tied up. And uh, it, what happened was the urine, the urine really provided that fertility boost where urine wasn't really necessary so much in subsequent years. Um, and they were able to um, ultimately wean off of soluble nitrogen completely, uh, which, which I found to be pretty interesting. Uh, here's a, a, just an a, a image to show this vegetative growth thing in, in a really powerful way. Uh, this is, is tracking down here along the bottom. This is tracking uh, stage of growth for corn. And you can see this V12, uh, I believe that, that what that refers to is, is how many leaves are on the stalk, something like that. But once you get to this stage, there's really rapid uptake where the plants are growing really aggressively and, and they're taking up uh, so much nitrogen within a really short period. Look at this, 40 days in to 80 days in. Look at between whatever that is, 45 and 55. Look at how much nitrogen is being taken up really quickly. What you want to do there, that's when you want to be applying your quick, fast-acting, soluble nitrogen. Um, you do not want to be over applying urine later in the season when your crop starts to, um, you know, develop seeds or fruits or, or flowers and whatnot. Um, that's when you want to start tapering off nitrogen. If you've got rich organic soil, um, that's, you know, in my case, that's when I stop applying nitrogen completely and I just let my, my, my microbes do the work from there. Uh, dilution is a question that comes up quite often as well. Do I need to dilute my urine? Is it necessary? How much do I dilute it? Well, I will say that uh, there's a million different answers to this question. Um, what most people that have really studied urine have found that no, you, you really don't need to dilute it. Unless you've got some obscene amount of salts in your urine, you're probably not gonna see damage to your roots from, from salts. Is Salt going to build up over time? Uh, possibly. I did, I did find, uh, you know, coming through what uh, other people have done, I found this really interesting um, uh, tidbit where somebody had, had posted, um, this is on the Walden Effect blog, uh, that one should dilute first to 1,700 parts per million total dissolved salts or total dissolved solids, TDS. Uh, I'm assuming that this is management for acute salt damage from a single application. Um, for reference, my uh, aged morning urine, that, that really uh, stinky stuff, was um, 4,444 TDS. So if I want to dilute that to 1,700, I, I need to add um, four parts water to that. So I'm down to a four parts water to one part urine. Well, as a matter of fact, that's really what I do anyway in my garden. I was quite pleased to see that. Um, I do it because I want to uh, uh, really distribute the fertilizer more evenly across, um, across my garden and not really worry about um, really piling up too much nitrogen in one place. Uh, a, a, another recommendation I see often is dilute 10 parts water to one part for young and tender plants. Um, uh, here's some potential downsides to dilution. It really is just extra work and it's extra handling. On um, the large scale projects, um, you know, this extra amount is actually meaningful. It's more weight on your tractor. It's more 
volume to move around. Um, it might mean more trips on the tractor if you're doing a, a land application. Uh, here's a recommendation from Pat, director of Little Wind Farms. Um, he is a longtime advocate of fertilizing with urine. And here's what he does. He applies it a, a, you know, a relatively very high dilution rate on his outdoor potted plants. What he said was uh, he has about one quart of urine to five or six gallons. Uh, I believe that's about a 25 or 30 to one ratio. Um, and uh, uh, again, outdoor plants being the uh, um, what matters here. Um, we talked about do salts build up over time, and I wanted to show you this interesting map here. Um, this is a, a if my my understanding of this is that if you are east of that line, that green yellow line, right down the middle of the country in the United States, uh, with the exception of coastal Washington and Oregon, there there is a higher precipitation to evaporation ratio. What this means is that your soils are going to be leach. They're going to leach instead of build up salts over time. Uh, this means that there's more rainfall than there is evaporation, and that if you're, again, east of the, the Mississippi River or east in the middle of the country there, that um, your outdoor plants, very little risk of you having accumulated salt damage in your soils. Now, if you do have accumulated salt damages from, from urine, um, really what you do is you flush. You um, do a nice deep watering on your outdoor garden. Now, in greenhouses or indoor plants or something, obviously this can be an issue, and uh, and you, you need to, to learn to recognize the uh, the issues with salt damage. But regular um, deep watering, as opposed to um, uh, frequent light watering, is your way to uh, take care of accumulated salts. Here's something I, I wanted to get into, something that I never really saw that was clear, and... Um, it would be useful for this workshop. How much urine do I need? And that really, like I said before, that comes down to an issue of how much nitrogen do you need in your garden? Uh, so what I did was get a little soil test from my state, which does soil test um, either for free or at very low cost. And uh, I got a recommendation for five pounds of a 20 NPK fertilizer. Per thousand square feet. So uh, let's just say hypothetically, I've got a two thousand square foot garden, and only half of that garden uh, even wants soluble nitrogen in the first place. So um, twenty percent uh, of something of five pounds really is what I'm looking there. When I say twenty oo, it means add five pounds of a fertilizer that's twenty percent nitrogen. So I can work backwards there, and I can say I need twenty percent of five pounds. I need one pound of nitrogen. If we use the rich earth estimate uh, of 6,000 milligrams per liter nitrogen, uh, or six grams per liter, uh, I need about 20 gallons of urine in order to make up this one pound. Okay, so uh, by their estimate, 20 gallons of urine is one pound of nitrogen. Five pounds, or five gallons, a nice five gallon bucket full of urine is uh, uh, 0.25 pounds. Okay. I thought that was pretty helpful. Um, you know, again, that's going with the soil test recommendations. What I might do in this case is, um, divide that over four different applications. I'm not going to apply all of my nitrogen at once. Let's say I provide that over four applications during the vegetative growth stage. Um, I, I've got those 20 gallons divided up into four five gallon buckets. So what I might do at my home is, is one of two ways of, of applying that. Um, I might just take a five gallon bucket and pour off one gallon or two gallons and then just top off with water, have a uh, dilute one to four, one to three ratio, and, uh, and just apply that out of a bucket. Or I could get a little more fancy with it. Here's a photo of, of one section of my garden. And what you might be able to see here is, is a slow taper downhill. And um, I've got this 55 gallon drum here at the top of the hill. So what I might do is add all 20 gallons of my urine to that 50 gallon drum and then just top it off with water 
And uh, no, sorry, not all 20 gallons. Add five gallons at one time. And then uh, fill to whatever ratio of water I think I need in order to irrigate my garden at the time. And then I would just drain out of the hose. And, and I would be very careful to fully flush the bucket or the, the drum in my hose uh, all at once. But I thought that would be a, a nice way uh, to do that. And, uh, and I will do that next year on my nitrogen heavy crops. Um, here's what I've basically done in the past. It's uh, similar to what Pat does. I may pour off a quart of urine and just fill up my one gallon watering can that you see here. And again, I'm not really here to advise on large scale applications, but um, here is what the folks in Sweden, I believe, were doing, Sweden or Germany. Um, trailing hoses on the back of a rather large tank. These trailing hoses are very close to the ground. They're really just dragging along the ground and depositing full strength urine directly to uh, what probably is a hay field. 